We are an ever-evolving community of visionaries, dreamers, and doers. Let me hear you. Yeah. Amen. And here at FCBC, what do we say? We live, we love, and we serve. Amen. FCBC, I want to take you to the book of Exodus on this morning. So if you have your apps or you have your Bibles, let us go to the book of Exodus. As we go to chapter 14, chapter 14, we're just going to be reading verses 10 through 14. So I'll give you a little time. Book of Exodus, chapter 14. Verses 10 through 14. Exodus 14, 10 through 14 reads as such. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you while in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you on today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you. And all you have to do is keep still. Amen. Go to God in prayer with me. Gracious God, we are once again here, still amazed at your power, still amazed at your glory, still amazed that each and every day you choose to look upon us with favor, God. In the moments where our faith wavers, you are there. In the moments where our doubt pops up, you are there. In the moments when we turn from you, you are still there. Still there loving on us. Still there shining all that is you on us, God. Never leaving us nor forsaking us. We have to be happy today that your love for us is not dependent on our actions. We have to be happy today that your love for us is still there, even when we don't love you back. Even when we don't do what we're supposed to, even when in the midst of all the good that you have done for us, God, we can still find a way to doubt you. So once again, we are here to say thank you, God, for being who you are, being God all by yourself. Now, fall afresh on this place today, God. We are here today because we need to know that you're still here working on our behalf. We need to know that you are still loving on us each and every day, God. You continue to show us, God. And all we have to do sometimes is simply remember all the things you've done for us in the past to believe in all that you're going to do as we move forward, God. So have your way on today, God. Have your way, God, and let your word flow freely. So in your name we pray and we say amen. 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 You may be seated. Family, I want to keep it simple today. I simply want to talk about that God will make a way. God will make a way. Family, a few months ago, uh, we took the Young Dreamers to the American Dream Mall out in Jersey. Uh, we had a great time. We uh, took them out there to do a mini golf session, to eat, to walk around, to observe uh, that new mall that's been being built for however umpteenth years, and it's finally done. But it's a great place. Um, so we did uh, the mini golf and we had a good time. They performed as well as you would expect kids to perform at mini golf. I won, of course, but nobody was really competing um, except me. But we had a great time. But we ran through that kind of quickly. Um, and at the end, I decided to try to add something on to just lengthen the time. So I decided to let them go in the mirror maze. Uh, and if you aren't familiar with the mirror maze, it sounds just what it is. It is a maze full of mirrors that seek to confuse you, and you must walk through and figure your way out. Um, now, watching all the kids go through this is hilarious. I did it because I wanted to laugh. Um, the kids I really pay attention to in these moments are the little kids who literally have no concept of what they are walking into. 
Uh, they just think they're going somewhere fun, following the older kids in the same direction that everyone else is going into. Uh, so we had a few go in at a time. They put us in groups and I let the older kids go first. And then I went with the little kids and I let them lead the way. And I watched them moving forward uh, quickly, not knowing what was coming to them, but following them, just observing what was about to happen. They walked through and they thought they were following the older kids. And as I watched them, uh, then came the first bump. The first bump and the first child ran into the mirror. And then there was a laugh and some confusion. Then came the second bump and more laughter and more confusion. But after the third, fourth, and fifth bump, the laughter died down. And it was confusion and frustration. And it very, became very apparent to them that this was going to be hard to find their way through the maze when everywhere you look, you are seemingly blocking your own path. Every direction they looked, they were seemingly blocked by themselves. And this just it wasn't any ordinary mirror maze. Uh, they like to add a little spice to it. So every uh, around 30 seconds or so that we were walking through, uh, they would turn the lights off and the lights would start flashing and the kids acted as kids would act. So not only are they being blocked by themselves, but now outside forces were making it difficult for them to move forward and they felt trapped in this area being they did not know what to do. So what happened next? What do you think happened next? The screams started and the panicking started and the holding on and grabbing on to Pastor Trey started because they were scared, because they were stuck, because they were trapped, because they didn't know which way to go, and they didn't think they would be able to get out. And they started wishing that they never came in the maze in the first place. FCBC family, have you ever felt trapped by your problems, trapped by a situation, felt trapped by everything that is going on around you, and you seem to be surrounded by nothing but chaos? And what's worse is that you seem to have walked into the chaos following the path that God has told you to follow. So now along with the chaos around you on the outside, you have the chaos of doubt now building up and swirling around you on the inside. The chaos on the outside and the doubt on the inside seem to hold you in place, causing you not to want to move forward, but instead stand still, stay stagnant, or move backwards back to a place where you're more familiar with. As we move forward in life, we often assume that because we follow a path which God has led us to, that we aren't supposed to run into any issues or any problems on that path because it's the path that God has laid out in front of us. But what I want to let you know, family, is that even when you follow God's path, there will be some challenges on that path. Things will try you. Things will try to make you doubt God and things will challenge your faith and make you wish that you never were pushed by God in the first place to where you are right now. You will be sitting there wishing that God left you right where you are because it was familiar to you. You knew everything that was going to happen there. You knew the ins and outs. You knew every twist and turn, and you were comfortable with the situation. While maybe not the best situation, at least it was acceptable. You see, we often mistake our comfort areas as the place as God wants us to be because we feel that everything is the best it's going to get. The level of comfort has make us think that God wants them to be this way, and we are here because God wants us to be here, and we should look at things as being great. But sometimes God has to come and force you out of your comfort zone and move you towards somewhere else, because ultimately God knows what is best for you, and God wants you to step out of that area that you've been stuck in and move somewhere else that will challenge you, that will make you better, that will grow. And whether you know it or not, God is always working on your behalf, trying to make your life better. But once things get a little uncomfortable, family, once things become a little unfamiliar, we tend to stop in our tracks. We tend to stay put and we tend to start panicking because we do not want to delve deeper into this uncomfort, deeper into this unknown, deeper into something scary, into something we might have thought that was going to be easy, but turns out to be harder than what we are currently experiencing. Does anybody lay down at night and their worries go to bed with them? And you tell yourself, if I could just get a little sleep, things will look better on tomorrow. Only to find the same situation staring at you in the face as you wake up. They're almost like shadows. You can't outrun them. You can't get away from them because they are going to follow you everywhere until you turn around and face them. And not only will these worries and problems be in your face when you wake up, but they will continue to follow you during this time. And you start to think that there is no end to this situation that you have gotten yourself into. 
You start to think that you will always be here. You start to wish that you never stepped out of your comfort zone in the first place. And you start to question God and what God was thinking when God asked you to move forward. We will start to think that the presence of an uncomfortable situation in your life signifies that God's presence is no longer with you. And you will sink even deeper into your own fear and your own despair and your own doubts. And you will start to believe that there is no hope for the way out, that it is even futile to even try to see some light in the middle of the darkness. But if we just do that, we will be feeding into the negativities of that thought. The strength of futility is the thought that it equals apparent finality. We will begin to believe that things will never change. We begin to believe that things cannot get any better than this. We begin to believe that God has forgotten about us in these moments just because things get a little uncomfortable than we can bear. And we need some reassurance for ourselves that there is hope. But sometimes we get so stuck in the thought that there is no hope that we need to be reminded that God is present. When God is present, there is always hope. And when you feel like this, you must realize that it is way too early to give up because when God is present, there is no reason to doubt. When God is present, there is no reason to fear. When God is present, there is no reason to get concerned because it's not over until God declares it is over. God has to have the last word in these situations and you cannot rush God no matter how bad the situation may seem. In the midst of your discomfort, you got to realize that you're still standing despite your weakness, despite the bad situation, despite the uncomfort, despite your own self-doubt. You're still here and you're still standing because God is with you. And as long as God is with you, there is nothing that can come against you, nothing that can take you down, nothing that can take you out, nothing that can stop you from moving forward because God is with you. As long as you believe and keep moving forward and doing what God asks you, God will always make a way. The Israelites have just been freed. Moses has done what he was asked to do. He has done what he is supposed to do. He had achieved victory. And now they are headed out of the land of their persecutors. But Pharaoh has not given up yet. He cannot just let this man come in and take his slaves away from him and his people. He cannot let this unknown God have victory. No, he must retaliate. So he chases down Moses and his former slaves and seemingly traps them with their backs against the wall. And now the newly freed people have nowhere to go and are not only fearing, but their freedom before their very lives. Family, sometimes your enemies want you to believe that there is no way out and that the walls are closing in on you. You see, your enemies will want you to believe that you are stuck in your current situation. They will want you to feel that there is no way out, that there is no way to go, that no one will come help you. And they want you to feel like there is nothing that you can do but turn to your enemy for help. They will want you to start to have these thoughts of self-doubt and thoughts that God has forsaken you because once you do that, you get trapped in that way of thought and they have won. And they only do this and they only seek to get you in this mindset because this is how they feel each and every single day. And once you feel like them, once you're on their level, they can now reach you. They can now use you. They can now tap into you and take all the good that God has in you for themselves without reciprocating anything back to you. You got to watch out for those people in your lives that kind of celebrate or not too upset about downfalls. Those people who don't seem that concerned when you're doing bad, but instead try to encourage you to make the best of where you're at anyway. Try to encourage you not to seek to grow. Try to encourage you to just stay where you are, because when they do that, they're just trying to reach into you and take all the good that God has put in you. Because the one thing, the one thing that these type of people hate is to see that you are doing better for yourself and to see that you are doing better than they are. And it's frustrating for us because sometimes we can do everything that God has told us to do, go on where God has told us to be, be the person that God wants us to be. And we can still run into these people and situations who cause us trouble in our path. Why, when I do everything right, God, does things happen like this? Why, when I do what you told me, do I end up in a situation where people have made me feel stuck? People make me feel like I'm trapped in a space where no good can come. People have tried to use me up until I feel there's nothing left in me anymore. And this frustrates us so much because our belief depends on seeing good things happen. Our belief is based on us seeing the blessings that God has for us. 
But what happens when there's nothing good for you to see? What happens when you look to your left and your right and all you see is darkness? What happens when you look forward and all you see is an enemy trying to lead you to another path? What happens when you can't see the good amongst the bad? What happens when God isn't giving you exactly what you want, exactly how you want, exactly when you want it in the right space that you think is good? But what happens when you can't see these things? What do you do when you don't know for sure that there is light beyond the current darkness? Your enemies want you in that space, debating these things to yourself. They want you to be in that dilemma, and they want you to believe that because if you are alone, then they can overcome you. It's easier to fight you by yourself than when you got God behind you. They want you to fear being by yourself. They want you to think you're alone. They want you to feel that you're alone because if you feel that you're alone, then you'll cut off everything and everyone that will try to help you, not even realizing it. They want you to fear. They want you to be fine. They want your faith to waver. They want you to not think that God has you because once you lose your faith and once you start to doubt your faith, they know that you have nothing to fall back on. And this is where the Israelites are currently. As Pharaoh and all his army pursues them and overtook them as they camped by the sea. And when the Hebrews saw Pharaoh, the books say they screamed out in fear. Their faith seems to be dimming. All the good that has recently happened seems to be ending. Their fear grows stronger and stronger. And we've been in this situation before where bad things are surrounding us, when everything seems to be crumbling around us, when we are trying so desperately to hold on to all the good thoughts and the good feelings that we once had, but cannot because of all the present chaos seems to be overwhelming us. But when things like this happen, when you're surrounded by the negativities of life, surrounded by people who are against you, surrounded and consumed by your own self-doubt, you cannot give in to it. You got to know that you have no reason to fear because the Lord is your light. When you're in these times and see no way out and have nowhere to go, you must continue to trust in God even when things seem bad. Elizabeth Elliot wrote that true faith goes into operation when there are no more answers. And it is in times like these where your faith in God is truly tested. You got to trust and know that the enemy hasn't won in your life yet. You got to trust and know that the battle is not over. You got to trust and know that you can still have the victory. You got to trust and know that God is still with you despite what you think, despite what it looks like, despite what your enemies say, despite how bad your situation looks, despite your own doubts, despite your own fears. You got to trust and know that God is with you. You got to trust and believe that God will make it way out, even when the problem seems bigger than you can handle, even when the doubt is overwhelming you, even when you have nowhere to go, nowhere to turn to, don't know which way to go. God is still there making a way for you. God is still present, and God's presence will never leave you nor forsake you. So go into these moments knowing and trusting that even though it may seem like a God is still behind me, even though I can't feel like God is still there, even though they're telling me something else, God is right here with me, and because God is right here with me, I can move forward knowing that there is going to be victory in this situation. The Egyptians are upon them. There is no direct escape. Death in front of them, the sea behind them. What were they to do? Then we see their doubt go into full effect. They said to Moses, was it because there are no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we tell you in Egypt, leave us alone and let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Why would God deliver his children out of servitude only to allow them to be plagued by the enemy? Their doubt has taken a new level such a level that they want to go back to this place that seemed comfortable, a place where they were enslaved. How bad is it that you fear moving forward in the direction that God wants you to do, that you turn back to situations that were literally breaking you, situations where you couldn't even see the light of day, situations where people and things around you were sucking the life out of you, Situations that were literally causing you to struggle to get out of bed each and every day. Situations that you thought you'd never get out of. Situations that you prayed to get out of. 
But when we go back, at least we know how to function while falling apart. At least we know how to operate in the bad. At least we know how things are. Even if they're bad, we can still walk amongst this dysfunction, this bad things happening all the time, these situations that we ask for. We forget about all the tears we cried asking God to help us. We forget about all the times we prayed to God, begging God to get us out of these situations. How ungrateful we can be when God gives us exactly what we want, when we ask for what we want, but when we get it, things are a little different than what we thought they would be. You asked for the new job, but now you got to work a little harder and it's pressing back against you. You asked for that new relationship, but now you have some dysfunction and you actually got to work things out together, but you don't know how to. You asked for these things to better your life, but you're not prepared for what it takes to continue to move forward, to continue to grow, to continue to better yourself and continue to get where you want to. We often think that when we ask for things and God gives us to them, things are just supposed to work. But I don't know about you, but when I was little and I got new toys, the directions say you will have to assemble them yourself. There are some things that when you get, they're not just going to come ready made for you to get. God will give you the pieces of what you asked for, but you're going to have to put those pieces together to create what you want, to be able to do what you need to do, to be able to go where you need to go. And you're not just going to do that by sitting around and standing still. You got to work at some of these things. You got to be willing to go above and beyond what you see in front of you. And you got to be able to trust that God has put you in and given you exactly what you need right when you need it, where you need to be. So don't doubt in those moments. Take what God has given you and create something new, create something better. Work and get to where you need to be. Things are different when God asks us to step out on faith and it ends up looking different than what we thought it was. Comfort gives us that false sense of security. Remember, just because you are comfortable doesn't mean you need to be there. Doesn't mean you need to be there. That comfort can cause us to linger in spaces we should have left two years ago. In situations we should have been out of. At jobs, you should have quit a long time ago when the boss kept trying you and you just kept smiling, putting on a nice face because you thought this was the best job you needed and you couldn't get another job. No, step out on that faith. Step out and move forward. God doesn't want you to be there just because it's comfortable. That comfort can be a dangerous thing. That comfort can make you think life is as good as it gets. But just because it's comfortable doesn't mean that's where you're supposed to be. How crazy it means to, for the, the Hebrews to say we should have stayed slaves. I wonder how Moses felt at the time. All this hard work he put in. And now the people are telling him, you should have left us where we were. You should have left us where we were begging to get out of. You should have left us in the situation, spaces that were draining and killing us slowly each and every day. You should have left us there. But. Moses doesn't let the words affect him. He answers the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance that the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you to see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight you for you only need to be still. In other words, chill out. Let God do what God does best. You see, every problem we face in life is an opportunity to see God's work. Victory is not obtained by standing still or going backwards or doubting. Victory is obtained by going forward and knowing that God has got your back, knowing that God is with you, and knowing that God orders your steps. Don't stay still feeling bad about yourself, wishing you could go back to how things were because things are a little difficult. Stand up and walk forward knowing that each and every step you take is a symbol that God is working on your favor. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea. Defy the water so the Israelites can go through on the dry ground. You see, sometimes God has to show us exactly who God is because God knows how we get. God knows that we like to doubt. God knows our faith wavers. God knew the Israelites would have doubts as they move forward. They knew they would have fears as they move forward, despite all they just witnessed in Egypt, despite all the miracles that they just saw. So God has to lead them in directions of impossibility because sometimes we need to be reminded about the power of the God that we serve. Yes, their situation seemed impossible in their minds, but for God, it was nothing. These moments will come right when we are about to give up all hope, right when we are about to succumb to all our fears, right when we are about to give up on God. You just lost your job, but somehow you still got paid. 
Your paycheck was a little short this week, but there was still food on the table. You shouldn't be walking after that accident, but you're running right now. You didn't think you could get that degree, but yet you were walking across that stage. You didn't think you would make it through the week, but yet you are here in FCBC on this morning. So you ought to give God some praise. Give God some praise. There are things that should have taken you out this week, but somehow, some way, God saw fit to wake you up this morning, get you here right now, get you in your right mind. So you ought to give God some praise. There were things, people who tried to stop you from getting to where you are because they didn't want to see you elevate anymore. But God stepped in and God showed up. So you ought to give God some praise because praise God when things seem lost. God will make a way out of no way. Even if God has to take you through the most impossible path you have to go, God will still make a way out of no way, family. So as I sat with the kids in the darkness with the lights flashing, them scared, all the other kids started panicking. But young one, one young dreamer hadn't lost her nerve. And she shouted out, Pastor Trey, are you still there? And I simply replied, yes, I am right here. Grab hold of my hand and grab the other kid's hands and I will lead you out. And immediately all the worries died down. All the screaming ended. All the fears were gone. And we walked out of that maze with a smile on our faces because once things, once at one time, things seemed terrible for them, but now it was good and over. They thought they weren't going to get out, but now they were walking out. They thought they were lost, but they were not lost at all because someone was with them who could show them the way out, who could show them the way forward. They thought they were stuck. But the whole time I was with them, ready to lead them out if the situation got too overwhelming for them. And there is someone in here today who might feel lost right now, who might be scared, who might not know where to go, who might feel stuck in a situation. But I want you to know today that God is still present in your life. You might feel like you can't go anywhere, but God is still with you. They might have told you you can't move and you can't do this and you can't do that, but God is still with you. So there is no need to listen to the words of those who don't know what God's power is, who don't know what God can do, who haven't seen the things that you saw, who haven't been moved the way God has moved with you. They don't know how God has worked in your life. God got you the situation before, and because God did it before, God can do it again. When things seem possible, God makes it possible. Praise God for making the impossible possible in your life. Moses, raise your staff, stretch out your hand. Moses did such and stretched out his hand and the sea of the waters were divided. So we know not only God will bless you in dark situations, but then God will use those same blessings to take your enemies out. As God used the sea to take out the Egyptians, as they tried to follow the Israelites through, the sea collapsed on them. So that same blessing that they didn't think you would get, that same blessing that you didn't think was possible, that same blessing that you were doubting, God will not only use that blessing to bless you, but God will also use that blessing to get rid of the enemies around you who continue to cause you to doubt, who continue to cause you to fear. You continue to cause you to doubt God, or, and they will not ever do you any harm. So somebody out here should be shouting a little more because not only were you blessed once, but you were blessed twice with one blessing. God used you, and God used that blessing to elevate you to a place where your enemies will never bother you again. God used that blessing to bless you to get to somewhere where you will never have to worry about those things anymore. God used you to bless you to help you know that God will always be present. And all it took was a little faith from the Israelites. All it takes is a little faith to keep moving forward, a little faith to keep moving on and not be stagnant, a little faith to keep moving forward and not move backwards, a little faith because you know that all through all the ups and downs of life, that God will still make a way. When you're lost, God will make a way. When you're struck down by your own thoughts, God will make a way. When you think you can't go any further, God will make a way. When the situation looks bad, God will make a way. When your enemies try to block you, God will make a way. When it's time to give up, God will make a way. When you think you're lost and it's time to throw in the towel, God will make a way. God will make a way so that you will have the victory. So trust and believe that God will make a way. Don't ever let what's going on around you change your perception about God. No matter how much chaos seems to be in your life, know that God is present. And because God is present, God will always be there for you, even when you feel the chaos overwhelming you. Be there for you to lean on when you feel like you're about to fall. God's presence will be there to give you the courage you need when you're scared. God's presence will be there when you think all is lost. And his presence will be there to allow you to keep moving forward because God will always make a way for you. Trust and believe in this fact, family. Trust and believe it. 
Why should you believe it? Because you're sitting here right now. If God hadn't made a way for you, you wouldn't be where you are in this moment. If you look back over your life, you can remember the times where you didn't think that you could make it. But yet, you sit here right now, standing tall, healthy, alive, and breathing. Because God decided to make a way for you, even when you didn't think that there was a way to be made. Too often, we let the chaos of this life surround us and overwhelm us. We let the chaos of this life change our thoughts about the situation. It is crazy that despite all the things that God has done for us in the past, we can still let things cause us to doubt how God will move moving forward, how God will work in our lives moving forward. God has made ways time and time and time and time again. But yet we can get into moments and times where we feel that things are too much for us to handle. But the tricky thing is that we get into those moments thinking we're by ourselves. You are never alone, FCBC. God's presence is always there with you. There is no reason to think that you're going to any battle by yourself. No matter how bad it seems, God's presence is always with you. And because God's presence is always with you, God will continue to make a way. Amen. Amen. Won't you stand with me?